Look, we don't compete with Tesla directly. We are not making cars, etc. Right? We are building L45 autonomy. We are building a Waymo driver, which is general purpose and can be used in many settings. They are obviously working on making Tesla self-driving too. I've just assumed it's a de facto that Elon would succeed in whatever he does. So, like you know, I, I, you know that 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 is uh, not something I question. So, but I think we are so far from these spaces are such vast spaces. I, I feel like we are in the AJI phase where like dramatic progress. Some things don't work well, but overall, you know, you're seeing uh, lots of progress. I, I think we're starting on the AI front. We are close to what you might call AGI um, or, or, or digital super intelligence. Um, I, I, I think we'll see. An, we, are, we are seeing an explosion in digital super intelligence here. Google CEO Sundar Pichai just admitted that what Elon Musk is building with Tesla and AI could reshape the entire market around him. We're the first autonomous vehicle company to receive FAA approval to be able to do that kind of pickup. And so we're deeply engaged with SFO officials so that we can do exactly that kind of pickup. The other thing that we're also deeply engaged in with our employees right now is fully autonomous rides on freeways. Waymo, the company backed by Google, is already running fully driverless rides in major cities. And honestly, it looks like they might be pulling ahead of Tesla's full self-driving. We're going to break down what Waymo's been doing, the tech behind it, how far along they really are, and compare that to Tesla's promises, which, let's be real, have been delayed for years. Personally, I think this is a big deal. Waymo isn't talking about what's coming someday. They're doing it now. And if what we're seeing continues, this could be the moment they overtake Tesla in the race to build the future of driving. Let's take a look at the numbers, the strategies, and what this all means for the road ahead. Since we began as part of Google nearly a decade ago, our goal has been to bring this technology to everyone, everywhere. Now with Waymo, our ultimate goal is to provide a self-driving vehicle tailored to every trip and to every purpose. And we can do this because we're building the driver. And this same driver can be adapted for all kinds of vehicles. Well now, I'd like to introduce to you all the world's first premium electric fully self-driving car. This is the self-driving car that car lovers have been looking for. We're going to design and engineer a self-driving Jaguar I-Pace equipped with Waymo technology. And with Waymo, the I-Pace will become the first fully electric self-driving luxury SUV in history. Now with this partnership, we can add up to 20,000 I-PACES to Waymo's fleet in the first two years of production. Those 20,000 self-driving vehicles can serve about a million trips in a single day. We have a clear vision of smart mobility, new levels of high quality, safe, enjoyable, entertaining and exciting journeys, giving our customers Precious, valuable time back. And as part of a shared self-driving service, we can make this premium experience accessible to everyone. Okay, I'm just going to say it. Waymo might actually beat Tesla at its own game. While we've been waiting on Elon to deliver on full self-driving for years, Google's Waymo is already out here putting real driverless cars on the road. Like, not test cars. They're launching 20,000 fully electric, fully autonomous Jaguar I-PACES, and they've already logged 22 million miles with no driver. That's insane. I mean, Tesla's system still needs someone behind the wheel. Waymo, you literally just get in and the car drives itself. No steering wheel, no pedals, just a smooth, quiet ride. And here's the part that really got me, the safety data. Fewer crashes, fewer injuries, Fewer airbag deployments than human drivers. That's not marketing, that's hard numbers. Personally, I think this is a huge moment. It's not hype anymore. This is real, and it's working in cities like San Francisco and Phoenix. Honestly, it feels like we're watching the future actually arrive. If I were Tesla, I'd be nervous right now. Waymo's not talking about self-driving, they're doing it. Driverless cars are here. Definitely a magical experience. It just was just smooth, it just works. This is crazy, like, I heard about this when I was a kid, but like, it's here now. 
but the public is still divided. I couldn't trust, I wouldn't trust it. I just kind of believe that the car should be driven by a person. I can't imagine a car driving off the bridge and then navigating around here with all the people walking and... Waymo is in pole position, delivering 22 million driverless miles in Los Angeles, San Francisco, Phoenix, and Austin. It's been kind of wild in the last couple of years to see the progression of the technology. All of the learning we had over the last 15 years has started to compound and things are moving faster. But less tested players, they're about to jump into the ring, including Tesla, whose track record of empty promises could cast more scrutiny on the movement for better or for worse. The expectations, yes. we don't have a lot of things out there that I just hear people are so excited about other than this day. I'm Deirdre Bosa and this week in tech, cruising or crashing into our driverless future. San Francisco has become a city of driverless cars. I, I don't want a human anymore, I want a Waymo. Google-owned Waymo is leading the way. Paid rides doubled in just a couple of months and rider-only miles, they tripled in less than a year. 10 years ago, you had demonstrators with people behind the wheel as so-called safety drivers. And today there is an empty car and you step in and you get driven by the car magically. I think for anybody not familiar with the technology, that this is something very close to magic. Waymo says it understands the stakes. Our mission is to build the world's most trusted driver, and the stakes of that are multiple. What began as a moonshot 15 years ago, under the Google umbrella, it has become mainstream in some of America's largest cities. It's high-end electric vehicles. They can be found all over the roads here in San Francisco. But what hinders its progress in the rest of America? Skepticism. In the early days, people set very high expectations for how quickly this technology was going to be ready. And um, as an industry, we did not meet those timelines. For many consumers, driverless cars still seem like something from a sci-fi movie. And the number one concern is safety. If the people that are behind driverless cars wanted to increase confidence, it would be uh, like, show me you know, 10,000 practice runs that worked perfectly. So Waymo's on a mission to do just that, using data to back up its case. A new public safety hub that compares driverless miles to human-driven miles and concludes that robo-taxis are not just safe, but safer. Fewer airbag deployments, fewer crashes causing injury, and fewer police-reported crashes than human drivers. Riders who have taken a Waymo, they say they feel safe too. I actually felt much safer getting in the Waymo than I do in just like most cars, especially the way some Ubers drive. <laughs> oh, a bajillion percent because they have like so many sensors and like that computer sees everything. I definitely trust a, a computer more than a human because a computer can't lose attention, right? Um, it's always paying attention to 360. Um, as opposed to human. As a woman, I am concerned a lot of the time after going home after nights out about like who my driver is going to be and I think it's that's the really nice part about it and that's what's also helping me um, not be as concerned about safety is because the actual biggest safety concern has been dealt with. Now other competitors are ramping up their own efforts and looking to capitalize on the moment. There's Amazon with Zooks. Amazon in this space rolling out it's Zook's cars later this year or early next. Okay, so Elon's back at it, says Tesla's launching robo-taxis in Austin by June. And in a few years, we'll see 10 million autonomous cars on the road. I mean, that's classic Elon, right? Big vision, wild numbers. And to be fair, the data is showing progress. Tesla's full self-driving has gotten way better. Apparently, about 80% of drives now finish without the system disengaging. That's legit impressive. But here's the thing, I'm still not convinced it's enough. Because while Elon's talking about the future, Waymo's already doing it. They're out here running 200,000 fully driverless rides per week. No driver, no fallback, you just get in and go. That's a huge gap. Elon says Waymo's too expensive and over-engineered, and that Tesla will win with scale and software. And yeah, that sounds great. But you can't software update your way around, trust. Safety, regulation, public confidence, that stuff takes more than AI and hype.
If Tesla pulls it off, awesome. But right now, Waymo's in the lead. And honestly, if I had to get in a driverless car today, I'd pick the one that's already proven it works. I, I think what's running on the AI front, we are close to what you might call AGI, um, or, or, or digital super intelligence. Um, I, I, I think we'll see, we are, we are seeing an explosion in digital super intelligence here. Um, and then we've got to, at Tesla, the we'll be launching unsupervised autonomy, basically self-driving cars with no one in them uh, in Austin next month. So it's, it's a big year for sure. Um, many other things on the, uh, in, in the in the works too. Sundar Pichai had a lot to say when Lex Fridman brought up AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. And honestly, it was a thoughtful, realistic take. He acknowledged how far things have come, but also reminded us how far we still have to go. He even joked about AJI, Artificial Jagged Intelligence, a funny but honest term to describe where we are today. Moments of brilliance from these AI models followed by really dumb mistakes, like failing to count letters in the word strawberry. It's true. We're in this weird phase where AI can write essays, solve math problems, and drive cars in downtown San Francisco, and yet sometimes it can't answer a basic question without tripping over itself. So, when Sundar says we'll see mind-blowing progress by 2030, but that true AGI might come a little after that. I get it. It's a cautious optimism. He's been in this space long enough to know it's not just about raw capability, it's also about alignment, safety, hardware, ethics, and scale. He's talking about society needing tools to handle fake AI-generated videos. He's thinking long-term, big-picture, responsible deployment. But then, we hear from Elon Musk, and he's on the other side of that optimism scale. To him, we're basically already there. At the Qatar Economic Forum, Elon flat out said we're close to AGI, or as he calls it, digital superintelligence. That's not just hype, it's his belief that the explosion in AI we're seeing right now is the real deal. He's got multiple projects pushing the boundaries all at once. Neuralink implants helping people control computers with their thoughts, a SpaceX Starship that might soon become the first fully reusable orbital rocket, and Tesla's unsupervised robo-taxi fleet about to hit the streets of Austin. From his point of view, this is the year everything changes. Not 2030, not five years from now. Now. That's the Elon difference. He's always working in fast forward. Whether or not he's right is still up for debate, but what's clear is he's pushing the envelope on every front. And this is where the contrast gets fascinating. Sundar is saying, we're close, but we still have time to prepare and shape this. Elon is saying, it's already here, buckle up. If Elon is even halfway right, he's about to leapfrog everyone. And I mean everyone, because AGI isn't just a fancy AI milestone. It's the gateway to everything, self-driving cars, humanoid robots, real-time language processing, robotics, diagnostics, autonomous factories, you name it. If Tesla's cars go fully autonomous without supervision, and if they beat Waymo, which has spent billions just to get to four cities, then Tesla becomes more than a car company. It becomes the infrastructure of transportation. Every car turns into a software platform. And if those cars are powered by an AGI that learns, adapts, and improves across millions of miles, Elon will own the market. Not just EVs, not just robotaxis, the whole damn transportation economy. Meanwhile, Sundar's alphabet, for all its brilliance, is still explaining AI's limits and building slowly. You can respect that. In fact, we need companies like Google to take a responsible, measured approach. But in the real world, whoever delivers first usually wins. And Elon is betting everything that he's first. So here's where I land. Sundar Pichai is wise to be careful. But if Elon's right and AGI gets locked into Tesla's ecosystem before anyone else figures it out, then we're not just talking about one company taking over a market. We're talking about a full-on shift in power across tech, transportation, labor, energy, even healthcare. Because AGI isn't going to be limited to answering your questions in a chatbot. It's going to run vehicles, manage factories, control satellites, diagnose patients, and do it all without ever needing a break. That's why this moment matters. 
If Elon's version of AGI hits first and scales faster, then yeah, he won't just own the market, he'll own the future. What do you think? Is Elon really about to take over the market with AGI and robo-taxis? Or is Sundar right that we're still a few steps away? I'd love to hear your take in the comments. If you got value from this video, hit that like button. It helps a ton. And if you want more breakdowns like this, don't forget to subscribe. We've got a lot more coming.